Good morning, neighbors. Let's sing Victory is Mine. Well, when I woke this morning, I had no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. So I got up off my knees, shouted victory, and victory today it is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today it is mine. I told Satan to get the hands behind me for victory today it is mine so just let me tell you why i love him so because he took my soul and made me whole he gave me his plan so i could understand the victory today it is mine and joy is mine joy is mine joy today it is mine Cause I told Satan to get the hands behind me for joy today it is mine and give the Lord the praise, give the Lord the praise. Come on, let's give the Lord the praise. I know he's worthy, oh yes, he's worthy. So come on, let's give the Lord the praise. Cause victory is mine, victory is mine victory today it is mine i told satan to get the hands behind me the victory today it is mine amen that song gets the blood pumping and it's uh, interesting, I had an experience singing that song once. We had the ser service and uh, uh, at the end of the service, after the preaching, I was asked to come sing and I had the song, a different song picked out. It was kind of a slower song. And then uh, someone stood up, you know, the Brother Tim stood up and said, you know, we have victory this weekend. So, or this, and so when Michael comes to sing, I don't want it to be a slow song. It needs to be something, you know, rejoicing. And that's never happened before as far as I can recall. And I thought, oh, no, I have to have, just have this slow song in my head. So I got up there, and it's like a light bulb just went off. It's like, this is the only song I can think of. So I started singing, The Victory is Mine. And I'll never forget, Brother Steve Napoli came up to me after the service and said, Brother, as soon as you got up there, we knew you're going to sing Victory is Mine. And what I thought is, Everybody else knew but me, but that's a uh, it's a glorious thing when the Lord had control, you know. And then it shows you you don't know everything; you just have to be willing to uh, flow with the Spirit. And uh, in Revelation chapter twelve and verse seven, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So I think that's just interesting. Cause sometimes we just think when we're fighting, it's just but the angels themselves are fighting against Satan and the demon, demonic powers, and uh, but they did not. Uh, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the Lord He asks us to fight sometimes, but we will prevail. We will win. And the one who created the devil, you know, of course He didn't create him as the devil. He was Lucifer. The Lucifer chose in his pride, and he fell. Uh, he he decided to want to really serve himself, not God. So when all these things happen, that he's just cast out. So that so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, 
who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Again, over and over it says, He's cast out, he's cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Over and over and over what we're reading is Satan and Satan is limited. Yes, he has strength, and obviously the angels, again, it wasn't just like snap of the fingers, they're at war with him. But God is in complete control, uh, and he's going to give us the victory uh, because we're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. And we did not love, don't love your lives to the death. Basically, you know, it's saying, you know, Satan, over and over and over, we're going to read, cast out, cast out, cast out. And finally, because he knows, Satan knows his time is short. He knows he's on a leash. It's very limited. Uh, but then we continue on, and we read about this Jewish remnant that's being assaulted by Satan. In verse 13, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And it's interesting, you know, Satan, you know, he's cast down. He's, you know, he's cast down, he's cast down. He knows his time is short. So just like a bully, he turns his, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, stopped the, these other avenues i'm going to go down another one and so i'm going to you know make war with these and then he spews water out of his mouth and in this uh revelation we see these things you know but even though the water spews out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood the earth helped the woman you know god makes ways of escape he is in complete control so though satan is doing these things and uh the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon has spewed out of his mouth. You know, every which way he's being extinguished. You know, we have the victory. We just have to keep on fighting. And sometimes I think we think, well, if I'm the victor, then I don't have any problems and I don't, and I survive. But, you know, the greatest heroes, they say, in battle are the ones who give their life, you know, who lay down their lives for their friends, for the others. And even at the end, and the dragon was enraged with the woman. It's kind of like, like we're saying, you know, he's a bully and he's attacking and he's doing all these things, but he keeps getting stopped. He keeps getting stopped. And he's being overcome by such weak people who are just overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony that they, when all ever, all else fell, they just, they stood. And uh, it should we should wake up knowing that we're victors. We are winners. We're going to overcome. And Satan, he really is, he's, he's this bluff who's, you know, all he, oh, he has power. Well, he has power as like a dog on a leash. Yes, they can bark and they can do this. And if you get too close to it, yeah. I mean, if you get close to a dog that's on a leash, uh, it will bite you, you know, if it's angry. And uh, so we don't want to act foolishly, but we have to know this. We have power. We have, because we are, I like the scripture, you are made more than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved you, who who laid down his life and has given you the power of this victory over death, hell, and the grave. So we thank the Lord, and we have victory today, and I pray that it is yours as well. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.